Have you ever wanted to scrape data from websites in Python? There are packages available such as urllib and beautiful soup, but wouldn't it be better if there's a much simpler way? So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use pandas read HTML function to scrape data from websites. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that you want to do is fire up your web browser and head over to the GitHub of the data professor. And then you want to click on the code repository. Click on the Python repository. And then scroll down, find pandas read HTML for web scraping. Click on that. And then right click on the raw link, save link as, and then save it into your computer. Okay, and a second way is to fire up your Google Colab. Click on open notebook, click on the GitHub tab, type in data professor. And then scroll down and find pandas read HTML. Okay, and because I have that, I will open up my local version. And so for this tutorial, I will be clearing out the output. And so if you want to follow along, please do so. So I'll click on the edit on the menu bar and then clear all outputs. Okay, and so only the input cell will be shown so that we can do this together. But if you don't have access to a interactive version, you can follow along using the GitHub. And so the first thing that we want to do is check out the website that we are going to scrape our data from. And let's say that we want data from the year 2019. So the data will be coming from the basketballreference.com. And so this is the NBA player stats for the season of 2018 to 2019. So let's have a look what's in the table. So you will be seeing all of the players. Okay, and notice that the header is shown right here with various fields, such as the rank, the player name, the position, the age, the team, okay, and the number of games played and etc. And notice that the header will repeat itself every 20 players. You see that there's 1 through 20 here, and then the header is repeated, and then you have 21 to 40, and then the same thing repeat every 20 players. And so we're going to have to delete the subsequent header, but we're going to keep only the first header. Okay, and then we're going to do that inside the Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so head back to the Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so we have two methods of doing this. We can either use the URL directly, as in method 2, or we could do it programmatically, as in method 1, where we break it up into the building blocks. And so the building block will contain the URL component and the year. And so the URL component will be this line here. And then the year will be replaced by the open and closing braces. Okay, and we're going to use the format function to do that, which will replace the open and closing braces with the year, because the argument is year right here. So we're combining it using the string which we define here which is the URL and this URL string contains the braces opening and closing and then we're going to use the format function and as argument we're going to use the year and the year is 2019 and so let's run this okay and then here we get the URL and so the benefit of this first approach is that you could do it programmatically if you want to web scrape several years for example 2015 to 2019 and you're going to make a list of the year and then you're going to make a for loop so let's run that and then you're going to get five URL with the years that are changing here. Okay, so you could try this out as your homework and let me know how it goes. All right, so we have already defined the URL. And now let's use pandas to read in the web page. So first thing is to load in the pandas package. So import pandas as PD. And then we're going to define a data frame variable. And inside it, we will be assigning the contents from the function pd.readHTML. And then as argument, there's two parts. The first is the URL. And then the URL will be the string, which contains the URL to the website. And header equals to zero, so that we will be able to define that the first row is the header. Okay, so let's run this. And we see that the data is loaded into this data frame. So you see that it easily loads the content from the HTML web page without using any URL lib. Okay, and then we're going to do the beautification of this data frame directly using pandas. So no additional libraries that are needed, just plain pandas to do this. So you just read in the HTML and then you're going to beautify it using pandas. Okay, let's continue. So let's see how many tables are in the web page. 
And so using the length function, we see that there is only one table. And so this is really straightforward. In cases where web pages contain multiple tables, you will have to determine which table do you want. Okay. And so here we're going to select the first table. And so we're going to type in DF, open bracket, zero, closing bracket. And so if you want to select a second table, if there is a second table, then we're going to type in DF, open bracket, one, closing bracket. Okay, and do the same if there is a particular table that you want to be selected in cases where there are multiple tables on the web page. So because this web page has only one table, we will use zero, which represents the first table. And so it looks pretty neat. It looks really nice here. And notice that there are some missing values. And notice that some players have multiple occurrences because they have been a part of different teams in the same year. Okay, and so we're gonna assign the first table into the DF 2019 variable. Okay, and so let's do some data cleaning. So before I mention to you that the table header will repeat every 20 players. So let's remove that. Let's remove the second and subsequent header rows because there will be more than 10. So what we need to do is define DF2019 and in the bracket, we're gonna use as argument DF2019.age. So we're selecting the first column, age, and whenever and whenever the first column is selected, we're going to look for the string age. Because for the age column, there is only numerical values. And whenever we see the word age, we will remove the entire row. Okay, and so the entire row will also contain the table header. Okay, let's do that. So you see that there are all of the subsequent table headers selected for this entire data frame. And so the, let's have a look at the length, how many header are there, and there are a total of 26 header. Okay, and then we're going to use the df2019.drop function. So the dot drop function will allow us to drop all of these rows from the data frame. Okay, okay, and now let's have a look at the dimension of the table again. And now we have 708,30. So let's look at the before 2019.shape. And so before we have 734 rows and 30 columns. And so here we have 708 rows and 30 columns. Okay, so 26 are indeed removed. And so let's do a quick exploratory data analysis. So in this tutorial, we're going to use the Seaboard. And so here we're going to display a simple histogram using the dist plot function and the variable we will be using the points df.pts okay and kde will be false because we want to retain the original frequency otherwise if kde is true it will be the probability that will be shown here okay so i can show you if it's true then it won't be the frequency it'll be probability here so we'll set it to false because we want to have the actual frequency, the count number, that for each bar, how many players have that much point, okay? So between zero and one, so one point, how many players? There are about 40 something players having one point, okay? And number of players having 35 points or more will be less than 10, okay? And so we see that the majority have points between zero and 20 and very few have points greater than 20, okay? And so let's say that we want to change the bar line color because right now it's transparent. So we're going to use the dictionary function here inside the hist underscore kws. So we're going to define the edge color of the bars to be black and we're going to make it about two, which is the size of the line width. Okay right here. And let's say that we want to change the fill color to another color. So we're going to use the color option. Okay. So you could use the hex code. So the hex code is the hashtag followed by the six alphanumerical characters. And so congratulations, you have successfully used Panda's read HTML function to scrape data from websites. And so to read in the web page content is simply using the read HTML function. And so the subsequent process will be using Pandas to pre-process the data by removing the redundant table header or looking for missing values and etc. Okay, so as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. So please feel free to modify this notebook to scrape data from other websites and upload it to your GitHub so that you can grow your data science portfolio. Okay, so enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.